As is tradition, the entire Heidelberg Laureate Forum has upped and left Heidelberg University and boarded the Königin Sylvia for a beautiful trip down the river Necker. In this vlog we will focus on artificial intelligence, the subject on one of the hot topics this year. We will talk to Laureate Leslie Valiant about what it's like being an AI pioneer and to child psychologist Brigitte Röder about the differences between human and machine learning. And we've got an AI surprise for some of the young researchers. Shall we go and find them? Let's go! Chelsea, you did a poster for this year's HLF. What was the title? Uh, it was Formalising Combinatorial Structures and Proof Techniques in Isabel Hall. <laughs> now, we asked you to send us a music genre. What did you send? Uh, folk music. Okay, so we have produced an album cover using AI. AI so there you go, have a look. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> uh, it's very folky yeah. because it's got a very like, Celtic kind of feel to it. Exactly. But also like combinatorial structures have all these patterns in them. Dominic, can you tell me the title of your poster? Privacy Preserving Machine Learning Using Topological Data Analysis. Something along those lines. And you sent us a music genre? Yes, I said classical music. All right, let's, uh, let's, let's take a sneak peek. Symphony of Topological Grace, Homology in the Art of Privacy and Learning, Dominic Gold. And it's me in a, it's, I mean, you can't get, like, right, like, I'm not wearing a suit and tie. I am wearing a suit, but not a tie. <laughs> I'm here with Leslie Valiant, who won the Nevin Liner Prize in 1986 and the ACM AM Turing Award in 2010. Leslie, you're a pioneer in machine learning, and one of the things you developed back in 1984 was something called probably approximately correct learning. Now, 40 years later, how does it feel to see machine learning progress to a point it's part of our everyday lives? Well, obviously it's, it's a great pleasure because at the time I was doing this work, I was trying to figure out, you know, which is the best, uh, what's the most fundamental part of, of, of uh, what hum humans call intelligence. And I landed on this idea of, of learning by example and I formalized it. And so now basically this is the kind of cornerstone of, of what people are doing successfully. So it's, it's, it's a very pleasure to see, yes. And it's obviously gone in many directions which one couldn't have, have foreseen, but uh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> the young researchers here this week will be some of the people who will take AI into the future. Is there a particular urgent or exciting challenge that you hope will be tackled next? Um, well, I, I think uh, you know, the, the main challenge for AI to be used uh, for more serious purposes is to make it more tr trustworthy. So at the moment it's a lot of fun to, to play with it, but if you really want, it, want to take advice from it, then it just has to be made more trustworthy, which at the moment the systems uh, don't quite achieve. And you've been coming to the HLF many times over the years. You were at the very first one in 2013. What keeps you coming back? Well, I think it's a very different kind of uh, meeting, um, certainly. Um, seeing the uh, laureates again, <laughs> it's a pleasure, but I'm um, also seeing the, the, the young scientists uh, which HLF gathers from around the world. It's a much broader set of people than uh, one ever sees uh, anywhere else. And there are some very good venues where you could meet them. And uh, so the dinners here in the evenings, I think, are very good for in a relaxed way. You can interact uh, in a low pressure environment and, and make some meeting of minds. I'm now here with Susanne Huber from the conference organization. Susanne, as always, the HLF seems to be organized seamlessly. How is your day going? Oh, my day is, I would say, very busy, uh, exciting. Yeah, and so far, great. <laughs> the most touching moment for me is to see the buses arrive from the airport and there are so many emotions in the face and they are so excited about what they have to expect uh, during this week. Yeah, I think that's, that's one of the best uh, moments. Hi, I'm Nicole and I'm head of communications of the HLFF and this is my team. 
So we want uh, that you don't miss a thing at the HLF. So we had a variety of blog posts. We have daily snapshots with the highlights of the day. We have recordings of the scientific program, a huge amount of fantastic photos. So just follow us on our journals and if possible, use the hashtag HLF24. So I'm now here with Maura Chas in front of her very beautiful exhibit here at the HLF. In making these things with your actual hands, physically, does that change your mathematical view and understanding of these objects? Absolutely. I, I learned so much. I taught my husband, still art, he's also a mathematician, so we, we really, it really has a way of like seeing it inside out from all perspectives. I discovered lots of things of very basic objects, you know, that even mathematicians who are very expert in an area don't know about. Have you got an example of something you discovered that wouldn't be so generally known mathematically? Well, for instance, you know, this thing here, most people recognize this is a climb bottle. First, this one is also a climb bottle, which is strange because it seems like inside out. This is a climb bottle, yes. And this one is a climb bottle. Wow. And that was a mm -hmm. very, very surprising and this, you know, wonderful discovery for me. So you're also part of the panel discussion on Friday on science communication. Um, how do projects such as this one contribute to the communication of maths and science? Well, just look at them. You know, these things talk. And people look at them and get intrigued and then it's a good excuse to talk. I mean, I told people you can touch and think and reflect. So I'm very pleased to be here with Brigitte Röder, who is a professor of biological psychology and neuropsychology at the University of Hamburg. Brigitte, you just took part in the Hot Topic panel discussion on the paradox of AI. Could you outline one or two of the main differences between human learning and intelligence and machine learning or intelligence? I usually look from the perspective of human brain development. And human brain development involves um, different steps of structural changes and functional changes. Very crucial, uh, our brain is, is born with all the neurons, so our processing units in the brain, but after birth um, a lot of connections are formed. But many, many more connections than we later have as adults. So during development, based on experience, these connections are pruned. That also means our learning mechanisms have to change or are changed during development. Um, and I think this is a crucial difference to AI learning. An AI learning system is just built, it gets the information and learning processes stay the same throughout the lifespan of an AI system. Now, one of the questions that was raised that I found interesting was that why is it that machines need so much data to learn? while humans need comparatively little data. Our brain is learning or changing during brain development, but of course it's not an arbitrary connection if uh, the, uh, the connections are not arbitrary if the brain is, uh, or if a child is born. That means we have already a lot of pre-knowledge in our brain when we are born, but it's then shaped by experience. So experience is able to activate some parts of the brain and shapes these uh, parts, but not all the experience is able to shape all the parts. So this is, this is something what is not implemented in an AI system. All, the system is just wired up in a certain way, while human brain development is hierarchically organized, certain areas respond to certain experience, but it also means you need less experience because you just shape and do not set up the system. Welcome to the Kulturbrauerei for the Bavarian evening. We are surrounded by young researchers looking splendid in their national dress. What's been your highlight so far from the HLF? 
I think the highlight has definitely just been the diversity of perspectives. Every conversation I've had, whether it's with a laureate or a young researcher, has just been so refreshing and inspiring. Uh, and it's really got me excited for the rest of my program. I think the most beautiful thing is to see the spark in eyes of all those people, both, science, both laureates and young researchers. When they talk about mathematics, about science in general, it, you can see that they love it, they see beauty and harmony in it, and that's amazing. Well, well, definitely any kind of social interaction, whether that's with laureates or with the other young researchers, everybody is really approachable and everybody is eager to talk to you and it's just been an amazing time. So my highlight has been the event, the Bavarian event, uh, where we I get to see different cultures, I get to show off my Corsa culture, which I'm very proud of, and I got to hear a lot of stories about items which have generational meaning from people, and so this has been been really an amazing experience. Yes. The next vlog will be from our last day at the Heidelberg Laureate Forum. We'll be based at the global headquarters of SAP and of course head to the castle for the final celebrations. We'll be talking to laureates, speakers and young researchers about how to make mathematics and computer science more inclusive. See you then. Cheers! Cheers. Cheers. Hey, Pepe Puri, Heidelberg, KJ.